Good morning, everybody. How are you going? My name is Jill. I'm the very lucky keeper that gets to look after these beautiful cats. Yeah. This here is Nunky. She's one of two servals that we have here at Werribee Open Range Zoo. We have Nunky and her sister, Marilly. Marilly was actually due to come out today and join us. However, she was um, pretty happy under her heat lamp this morning and didn't want to come. So, <laughs> Nunky was very keen, so here we are. So, you may have noticed on your wanderings around the zoo so far, the servals aren't actually on display here at the zoo. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, one being that they're quite shy animals. They're from Africa, and in Africa they do have a number of predators such as lions, hyenas, leopards, even a large predator, uh, sorry, a large eagle could be a potential predator of a serval. So their natural instinct is to, is to hide and stay out of harm's way as much as possible. Thank you, Jack, come and join us. But they're also really good at camouflaging. So they've developed that beautiful coat pattern in order to camouflage in with their surroundings. Um, and so the fact that they're really good at camouflaging and they're really good at hiding means if they were on display, chances are no one would actually see them. So that's why we decided to start doing this training program with them, so that people can get to see them up nice and close, see how they move and see how they look. So there's a couple of really defining features about the servals, one being their beautiful long legs and also their big ears. So their legs are used to do these fantastic jumps. So this is about two and a half meters and textbooks say that servals can jump about 3.8 meters. However, we have Cox uh, Nunky jumping about five meters across, so that means uh, Nunky is the best jumper in the world, clearly. <laughs> Not right, Nunks. They can also jump about three vertical meters in the air to catch low flying birds. Um, however, we won't be demonstrating that today since three meters high is about the height of the roof, um, and so we wouldn't want Nunky to get caught on that. But they use their amazing jumping skills to catch their prey. So what they'll do is they'll listen out for their prey and be able to pinpoint exactly where it is and jump over the bushes just like that to land directly on top of it. Their favorite food are things like rats and mice. They love rodents. But they'll also eat things like lizards and insects and snakes. Do you need some help, monkey? <laughs> yeah. The reason why they have that nice short tail as well is to enable them to, to pounce really well. Um, they wouldn't want a really long tail because they'd make, be making lots of noise brushing up against all the bushes and giving away their location when they were when they were hunting. They don't have the most amazing sense of smell though, so as you can see, Hunky's struggling to find that bit of meat. There she goes, she's found it now. But they'll also use those nice long legs to reach inside of hollowed out logs. I'll try and demonstrate that again since I actually missed. There we go. Good girl, Nunky. <laughs> Did you get it? And they do spend most of the time on the ground. However, as you can see, they're amazing at climbing trees. And they do really use their size to their advantage as well. So Nunky's about 11 kilos. And so that's a lot lighter than a lot of the other predators in Africa. So now servers will be able to eat, reach high up into the trees and get a hold of animals that would otherwise think they're pretty safe from predators. But they're also very opportunistic hunters as well. So they'll catch a small amount of their food from rivers and lakes. Again, using those nice long legs to reach inside of the water, they're catching the thing that might be inside. Some little fish, little frogs, um, even little water birds that might be there. And they're really effective and efficient hunters as well. They'll catch about 70 to 80% of the things they're actually hunting. Which compared to say a lion, which has about a 20% success rate, it make, makes these animals incredibly good hunters. So Nunky's supposed to go through that log. Oh. <laughs> She's cheating today. Oops. As I'm demonstrating there, I do have terrible aim. But uh, basically where we've got that little bird's nest there just to demonstrate how easy it is for servals to get high up into the trees to raid something like a, a bird's nest. They'll be able to eat the eggs, the little chicks, and the parents as well. Um, but as I said before, about 70% of their diet is made up of rodents. Um, and that makes these animals really popular with farmers, particularly grain farmers, which is one of the reasons why um, these animals aren't actually facing extinction. So they're not in conflict with people like a lot of other animals in Africa, unfortunately, are. Um, that's the main reason why these animals aren't facing extinction. Um, they're, they're classified as an animal of least concern, which is fantastic news for them. Um, we always do say to people, though, to please have a look on our website to see how you can help um, our campaigns, which are helping animals that are facing extinction. Does anyone have any questions about the servals, though? No. Um, 
or not in Australia. Um, people in North America and some parts of Europe can have these animals as pets. Um, they don't make very good pets. Um, they're very independent animals. They don't really like affection, um, which is one of the reasons why they were bred with domestic cats. And if anyone's heard of a savannah cat, um, that's a cross between a serval and a domestic cat. Um, and the reason why they're illegal to have in Australia is because of the risks to our wildlife. So a lot of our wildlife has unfortunately gone, unfortunately gone extinct um, and, or is threatened because of feral cats. Um, and so we wouldn't want to accidentally introduce something like a serval to that, to that mix. It would be game over for a lot of other species in Australia if we did have these animals here. Yeah, question? We actually trained them all of their all of the routine that you just saw. They trained, uh, they learned to do that here. So they arrived here when they were about three months old, and from the moment they arrived, we started um, doing this sort of station training with them. With them, so getting them to go to a certain point, um, giving them a food-based reward, and then the the rest of the routine was built on from that from that point. Any other questions? Do you yeah. have a breed? Um, there's no plans to breed these girls. Um, because they're not actually facing extinction or anything, they're not part of a conservation program or anything like that, and so they're only bred if another institution actually require them as part of a, um, their display. Um, and so if another institution in the region would want servals, um, the regional stud bookkeeper might um, sort of investigate whether you know these girls would be willing, or if we were willing to breed these girls. Um, and yeah, just that's pretty much the only reason. Any other questions? Um, yeah, question there. It's all gone. <laughs> it's okay. I'm going to be out the front in just a couple of minutes though, so if you do have any other questions, save them up and I'll meet you out there in a couple of minutes. I think Nancy looks like she's uh, ready to go back. I've lost sight of her. Hopefully I'll be able to find her soon. But um, yeah, thank you very much everyone. Thank you. Oh, there you are.